I was in Houston, Texas, and I was in Houston. I was in the uh, Harris County Jail with a man by the name of um, um, T. Cullen Davis. Mm -hmm. T. Cullen Davis was an oil billionaire out of Austin, Texas. Mm -hmm. And uh, my attorneys, uh, Richard, uh, Richard Cobb, he uh, sent me to court one day and he said, I want you to listen to this young brother was in court and uh, uh, Judge Carino, they was offering him 60 years and he took a deal for 30 years, right? Right. And he got, a, he, he got 30 years for a Grand Theft Auto for stealing a car. Damn, what right? was this at? In Houston, Texas. Oh, man. In 1978. Yeah. Uh, for stealing a car. Now listen what this judge said. He said, I have found you to be a menace to your community, right? <laughs> Marvin Zittler is a Chevy dealer, sells 2,000 cars a, a, a month. Mm. You elected to go and steal a person's car that was 65 years old, and she had to get her husband to dialysis. So he's saying that you could have went and stole a car and they had insurance. You could have took a brand new car. Mm -hmm. But you was in your own neighborhood right. and you stole a used car that they needed. You're, I, I, I don't want you in my community. So you are a menace to your own community. Mm -hmm. So I'm putting your ass away for 30 years. <laughs> Man. Hey man, that sound about right, man. You feel what I'm saying? If 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 they start doing that a lot more, man, they'll quit doing that. You know, but you get a hundred years for killing somebody in your own community. Cause he know if you start getting the message, you'll be a serial killer in his community. Well, yeah. Man, if they start uh practicing that, man, people will start I don't even know why they let them walk around with these guns. This gun law stuff. This open carry, that's that's the craziest thing I ever seen. But white people been open carrying all the time. They are licensed to kill. But when you you can't have a gun, nigga, you still a slave. You have a right to yeah. say you don't want to be a slave. Right. But uh you know it's kinda... if everybody had a gun, if everybody had a gun, bro, we would cut down the murder rate. That's what they trying to do in Texas, but you know, Man, it's getting ridiculous. These man, you see everybody with a gun hanging off their waist. Man, These look, look here. Just, anything you say, they quick to pull it up and. Right. And in, 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 in 1974, uh, in San Quentin, 1973, they said Compton was murder capital of the world. Right. Mm -hmm. They had 20 dead bodies. All of them wasn't killed in Compton, but they brought them to Compton. That was the first time a state when it was. Dehumanized, dehumanizing Compton. They made it murder capital of the world in 1973, right? Mm. In, in 1973 in San Quentin, California, Bastille by the Bay, we had 189 stabbings and 12 killings in a year, and nobody had a gun. Murder capital of the world. Every time the gate racked, it was the bay. So you saying without the gun, it's without, still, with, it's still with, gonna go just down. Just and running up on a man, killing him face to face, choke him to death, nigga. whatever. <laughs> <I'll> <laughs> Everybody. <pay>. So now <laughs> we had a lockdown, and they brought a new warden in called Warden Sumner. Mm. May of 1974, he said, "Gentlemen, here in Bastille by the Bay, we'll be opening the yard in three weeks. So all the contracts you got, get ready, sharpen your knives." Everything you got, we won't be locking down anymore. Damn. But you didn't hear what he said. There will be no warning shots. Went over our head, right? Mm -hmm. So we came out on the yard that week. Everybody standing on the yard hadn't been out nine months, just like a woman have a baby, right? Right. Before, if you stabbed a man, he had to give uh, Sergeant Smith say, lock and load. He shoot one time in the air, back off of it. Mm -hmm. Bam! He shoot twice, and then he draw down. Right? This Mexican ran over to this white boy and started stabbing him. Sergeant Smith said, "Lock and load." Shot the Mexican in the back of the head, killed mm -hmm. him. White boy jumped up and said, "Shoot him too!" Bam! Took him down. Everyone was like, "What?" Then locked the pin down. Right? This some real life story. This, this ain't no make believe. This, this, 
went the next week was on the lower yard. Two Mexicans get in a knife fight. Lieutenant Parker said, lock and load, kill both of them. And what, what prison was it? San Quentin. Man. Next thing you know, two brothers, a couple of weeks later, got into a fist fight and shot both of them. Mm. When people start seeing that their life was in jeopardy for murder, mm. hey, how you doing today? Life change. Yeah. You ain't got to do but lay down a couple. <laughs> And everybody that pretend, everybody want to go to heaven, but don't body want to die. Yeah, that's a true statement. So when you make that move and your life may depend on it, you may put, when you walk up on me and I'm strapped to, yeah. equal justice. So I wish everybody would get a gun. Just like they give out food stamps, give they give me these cell phones trying to, be in your conversation, these Obama phones. Send everybody a little gun. Get everybody a gun. At least a little twenty-two or something. Well, so give them something. <laughs> That's the government gun, the little twenty-two. <laughs>